Next up is biology topic two. So this is the slightly harder biology content we're on to now. And our first topic is classification. So classification is just about grouping organisms so we can um, put more similar organisms together. So uh, the, group, the way we group them is first we divide them into five kingdoms, then the kingdoms are split into phylums, then class, then order, then family, then genus, then species. So you need to know this order and um, that it goes starts from kingdom at the top and goes all the way down to species. They like to often give you lists and maybe miss one or two of them out and you have to fill in the gap. Just need to memorise these in the order of them. Uh, we also need to know the definition for a species. So a species is a group of organisms that can produce fertile offspring. The idea is that the further down the list we go, the fewer organisms there are in each group until you get down to species, which is just sort of a very small subset. Okay, so that is how we group them. So we do need to know about the five kingdoms of life. So the five kingdoms are plants, animals, fungi, protoctis and prokaryotes. Um, if you can give an example for each, that would be good. And you need to have a general idea of the characteristics. They're mostly interested in plants, animals and fungi, so the ones that you're more likely to know about anyway. So a special thing about plants is that they uh, undergo photosynthesis and they have cell walls made of cellulose. Um, and pretty much any plant you can think of, so roses, oak trees, wheat, pretty much anything. Um, animals feed on other organisms, they are multicellular, so they've got more than one cell, but they don't have a cell wall. So slugs, ladybirds, lions, us, dogs, cats, pretty much any animal. And then we've got fungi. So fungi make spores instead of seeds, and their cells have a cell wall that's made up of uh, chitin, so something different to the plants. So the plants made up of cellulose, the fungi made of chitin. Um, examples are yeast, mushrooms, the easy one to remember, I think, really, and moulds. Um, then we've got our final two groups, protoctists, uh, uh, which are made up of just one cell. Um, algae is an example, which might be easy to remember. Um, and prokaryotes, which have no nucleus, they do have a cell wall, but it's not made from cellulose. And just you can just remember bacteria for that one, really. Again, you just need to know the groups, um, and it is the top three that they're most interested in, really. So this brings us to the binomial naming system. Um, this is kind of the thing where biologists use posh Latin words to name animals or plants, just organisms. Now each name's got two parts and it's made up of its genus and its species, which were the last two groups in our classification system. So for example, human beings belong to the genus Homo and our species is sapiens. So the binomial name for human beings is Homo sapiens. So you just need to know that the first bit, first bit is the, oops, Susie. The first bit, there we go, is the uh, genus, and the second part of the name is the species. Right, there is one group that they have decided you need to know a little bit more about, and that is the arthropods. So arthropods are a phylum of animal and uh, we can identify them because they have an exoskeleton, segmented body and jointed legs. They then get split into groups based on how many legs they have. So we need to know that insects have six legs, arachnids, so spiders, have eight, crustaceans have 10 to 14 and myriapods have more than 20. Um, common exam question might be that they'll show you a picture of an insect or a few insects and you have to decide which belongs to which group. Okay, so classification can be done in two different ways. There is artificial classification, which is based on observed characteristics and it's designed to be simple. So um, we might group things based on where they live. So puffins, penguins and gulls are seabirds because they live on or near the sea. So it's completely artificial, we just do it for our own convenience. The other option is natural classification, which tries to use relationships. So um, we might say and have a look, um, well, all those animals have got webbed feet, so they're gonna be closely related. Um, or those animals have got four toes, or they've got three joints, or whatever it is. We look for um, features of the organisms in question to help us classify them. Or 
What we really do nowadays is we just use DNA sequencing to find which organisms are most closely related to each other. Um, I'm afraid most of this classification stuff that I've just told you about is a bit outdated. The best thing is to look at DNA and by looking at um, organisms' DNA we can see really clearly how closely related they are. So you do need to know about DNA sequencing but unfortunately you have to know about all the classification stuff as well. So there are problems with classifying. Um, it's basically because all living things are at different stages of evolution, so they might have been around for longer than others, it's hard to group them in really solid ways because the groups can break down because we could end up with creatures that could belong in more than one group at a time. So it's, it's difficult to group them properly. We also have the problem because bacteria re reproduce asexually, so they split themselves in half. So strictly, they don't have a species because a species is a group of animals that are fertile. But if it reproduces on its own, then it's not a sexual reproduction. So it's not a species, which is a problem. Um, our classification also falls down with hybrid animals. So hybrid animals are where two animals from different species reproduce and create another animal. So for instance, um, horses and donkeys, if they breed, you end up with mules. Now mules are sterile, so they, they cannot have offspring, which means that they don't have a species, so they don't fit into anywhere in our classification system. Um, there are loads of examples of this, like um, lions and tigers. You can make ligers or tigons, depending on which is the male and which is the female. So this idea of hybrid animals isn't completely bonkers. Now, classification is generally quite closely linked with evolution, because the idea is that organisms in the same group um, are usually very closely related to each other, or they share a common ancestor. So the reason they're similar and in the same group is because they evolved in similar situations or they've just come from the same place. So if an animal is very similar to another one, it's a clue that they might be evolutionary related to each other. Um, but because they live in different places, they would have different features. So there is a big link between um, where a creature lives and what features it has but it can lead to sort of problems so for example dolphins are similar to fish because they live in the same place but they are classified differently because dolphins are mammals but if we look at dolphins and bats they live in completely different environments but they are both mammals so are related through evolution so you have to be a little bit careful when you're doing these and to know that there is some link between evolution and classification and we're just looking for these links and that, that's the idea to try and see where everything came from really. Okay, so that is classification. Remember if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask.